in your book, Thinking About the Torah, um, the chapter regarding love and God. And you make a distinction between the medieval philosophers and the modern philosophers. And we wanted to ask you to go over that and kind of tell us how you feel about which position uh, we should take. Okay. Uh, Maimonides thought that love of God, if you want to understand it, is the, as it were, the icing on cake, the, 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 the last commandment you fill. He thought every commandment that deals with action, such as kashrut or prayer, or, uh, Shabbos observance, has to do with fear of God. Okay, love of God for him comes in only with the acquisition of knowledge. So uh, love of God is something that would for him only come in in a mature part of your life after years and years of study and reflection. You can't just march into a synagogue and claim to have loved God, not for him, okay? So, uh, 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 for him, love and knowledge go together. And knowledge takes a lifetime to acquire. So you 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 can't you 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 it, it isn't something you get right away. Uh, for Franz Rosenzweig, a 20th century philosopher, in a way it's the opposite. Uh, that his view is look, if you don't love God, all the other commandments don't amount to anything. So what, what he's saying is it's the foundation, it's it's the basis As opposed to uh, of every of everything else. If if you don't love God, then uh, uh, keeping kosher, but why are you doing it? And if you do do it, it's just rote or it's uh, uh, just mechanical. Uh, without love of God, all the other commandments lose their meaning. So now, can you argue? Can you argue that? Um all like um, an agnostic or an atheist who keeps all the mitzvot is closer to the truth than the idolater who is also following the mitzvot but is an idol worshiper and he has the wrong idea. If you, if you're Maimonides, if you follow the mitzvot, every, all of them, and pray to an image of God, an anthropomorphic image of God in your mind, then your activity, everything you've done is worthless. Keeping kosher, observing Shiva, it counts for nothing. Now, let, let me be clear on what, on what he's claiming. He's claiming, and this is uh, it's not the standard position, but he claims of the 613 commandments, 611 are means to an end, not ends in themselves. Okay, what there are only two commandments he thought that are that are ends in themselves. Numbers one and two. <laughs> Belief in a monotheistic God, which we've seen tonight, is more complicated than it may first appear, and rejection of idolatry, which as we've seen tonight, more complicated than it may first. It isn't just that you don't bow down to wood and stone. So all of the commandments lead you up to the, if you don't have those two, the other commandments have failed you. They haven't led to where they're supposed to take you. Hmm. Okay. Now, as between saying that love of God is the final step, acceptance and love of a purely monotheistic God is the final step, and saying, on the other hand, it's the first or most basic. So neither of these views, in my opinion, is foolish. You, you, you could argue for either one. I happen to side with Maimonides. Uh, there's no secret. Uh, but the other view is, is it, it, there's much that can be said for that, too. Uh, the, the question is how you conceive of love. Maimonides is making it very, very difficult, a very difficult commandment to fulfill. Uh, and uh, it's not that Rosenzweig is making it easier, but saying it has a different status. Again, it's the foundation rather than the last step. Uh, again, I, I can imagine support for either one. 
if I remember correctly in that chapter, um, you discuss the fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Rosenweig, I don't know how to pronounce his name Rosen properly. Rosenzweig. Rosenzweig, okay. Um, in order for love of God to be the foundation, the issue here is that there has to be a conception of God to love, and that comes right off the bat. And that would create problems with everything that we've been discussing till now. Rosenzweig isn't the rationalist that Maimonides is, okay? So uh, uh, he thinks that, uh, that uh, God is calling out for your love, asking you to love uh, uh, him or her, and this is the most basic experience you can have, the fact that your love is wanted. And this comes uh, uh, long before any step into philosophy, metaphysics, anything that the Rambam was involved in. Okay, so uh, this is what, what I would call an existential view of religion, that, that love of God is more of an experiential uh, phenomenon than it is a, ra a rational achievement. Now, okay. I would say if you, if you asked, if we had a poll, I'll bet you anything that they're more existentialists than rationalists. I think I'm on it clearly in the minority. That doesn't mean he's wrong, but uh, as to his followers versus uh, uh, Rosen's, I think most uh, modern Jews today would side with Rosen's. And having an existential um, view of religion, uh, how does that lend itself towards your conception of God? In that case, you have uh, your view of God is as something reaching out to you. All right, so uh, it, it, what Rosenzweig thinks is that uh, uh, the, Maimonides' God is too mysterious. Yes, Rosenzweig would say there's an infinite uh, a distance between God and you, but God's able to transverse that difference and to reach out to you in a very basic way and ask for your love. And that's what's going on in the commandment. So is God, it a pantheistic view or is it not? No, it's not pantheistic. But the, the God is overcoming the vast difference between you and God. Yes, it's infinite, but God is overcoming that. And that's the the majesty and the beauty of that commandment. Now, for Maimonides, it's the opposite. Yes, there's a vast and infinite difference between me and God, and the whole point of the religion is to get me to respect that difference, mm. wow. to get me to see just how transcendent, how distant and God really, how utterly unlike me God is. That's the whole point of Judaism for him. Whereas for Rosenzweig, it, it's no, that God needs you. God is saying, love me. Uh, God wants you to return love. There's uh, a touching God, point between the human and God in a way. That's right. They, they meet. God, they meet God has overcome the distance. Uh -huh. and that is the greatest thing that God has ever done. And naturally, I, we could assume that most people would, would romanticize that type of view. That's right. That's right. God needs me. God wants me. God, well, okay. Uh, it's very hard to say no. It's, it's the opposite. God wants you to respect the difference, not to try to overcome it. Beautiful. Amazing. I'm going to end on one.